So as you work on the MP, a particular style of development that I would really encourage you to experiment with is something called test-driven development. We've talked a little bit about this on the lessons as we've gone over some of the problems together and as we've done some of our data modeling exercises. But when you work on a larger software project, this is tremendously useful. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to open up our test suite for MP1 and we'll kind of go through one example of this. We're going to talk a little bit about what's in here um, and then kind of how to approach this. So um, first of all, one thing I want to point out is that these test suites that we provided for um, your machine project are really the kind of test suites that I would write if I was working on my own app. Sometimes when you're writing test suites for the purposes of grading, people write these really convoluted, very adversarial things that you know, aren't really reflective of how you would use testing as part of a real life project. Um, I've tried to avoid that. So these tests are, you know, are they completely exhaustive? Are they gonna like, you know, is there a way to pass them that might not have been what we thought? Sometimes, yes. We noticed students found a few ways last semester. We've uh, closed some of those holes. Um, but in general, the idea here is that, you know, don't be afraid to use the test suites and to look at them and to understand what they do. A lot of times the test suites are on some level part of the documentation for the MP. We expect you to read them, understand what they're doing and use that information to, um, you know, to be able to pass them. Right. Um, okay. So let me show you a couple of, of things here. So uh, typically the uh, test suites that we provide are divided into to really sort of two types of test suites. There are what are called unit tests that test one specific piece of functionality. And then there are what are called integration tests, which test a bigger chunk, right? So for example, the integration tests, a lot of times they actually run the entire app and test things like what's displayed on the screen is correct. A unit test, on the other hand, might test for MP1 that your course comparator works properly. And in fact, that's actually one of the, your summary comparator. That's actually one of the things that we do test. So let's look at the test that we provided. Uh, for this checkpoint, there are four tests. There are two um, unit tests and two integration tests. So the unit tests test your comparator and that filter method. So these are the two things that are part of the course model, or the, sorry, the summary model that you need to finish. So down here, uh, I have this comparator method. Um, let's we're, we'll work on this a little bit together. So let's do this. Uh, let's do this together. Uh, this is not right, but the idea here is that this is supposed to allow me to. The reason why you're when your app starts up, the courses aren't sorted is because this comparator method doesn't work. We want to take the courses that are provided and sort them in a way that makes the UI more intuitive. So part of what you need to do is figure out how to get this to work. Okay, um, and then the other thing is that filter method. So that's again right down here, and this takes a list of courses and a piece of text and filters it appropriately. And this is used by the search method. Um, so when you work on any of our MPs, let me please, I beg you, start with the unit tests. They're simpler, they run much faster, and in general, they're a lot more helpful. Once you get the, typically the larger tests that test like the entire app have no chance of working until the unit tests work. So really what you want to do when you work on a project like this is pick one test and work on it until it, until it passes. Okay. Then pick a second test and work on that one until it passes. And then make sure they both still pass together. Cause sometimes when you fixed one, you broke something in the other one. Right. And this is how you move forward. You pick one test at a time, zero in, understand what it does, run it, add your log messages, you know, and just get that one thing to work. Um, down here, we have two integration tests. So the integration tests are slower. They're more uh, complex in certain ways. Um, this one tests to make sure that your search bar works properly. So we're actually going to type some simulated text into the search bar and make sure that the UI behaves appropriately. Um, and then down here, we have, wait, where'd it go? I think I skipped over it. Oh, right. Uh, this test to make sure that your summary view loads properly. So when the app loads, we should see the list of courses in the right order and the title should be formatted properly. And until you, you do this, um, you know, it, it won't, uh, things aren't going to work properly. But again, start with the unit test. So first of all, let's run the test suite. Uh, I can do that by, uh, there's a couple ways to do that as well, right? Um, so one thing I can do, I don't know what's happening here. I think this is just slow. 
let me see if I can reopen this and get it to, to wake up. It's sort of, looks like it's stuck analyzing, I'm running some other things here. Well, let's just run, we'll run it using the run menu for now. Okay, so I'm gonna start this up. Oh, looks like something is broken. Uh, let's clear this and then try it again. This might be, oh, thank you, Android Studio. Let's try reloading the project and see if that helps. Happens to everybody, apparently, including me. Um, all right, that's good. I think things are, are going to be better. I don't know why this is happening. Uh, this is a problem with Google's plugin. See, even they have bugs. All right, so let's run the entire test suite. Now, let me show, point out something, though, about running the entire test suite, which is that Running the entire test suite is going to run those integration tests as well as the unit tests, and the integration tests are slow. So you don't typically, so see, test summary view, uh, 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 this is going to take a few minutes. You don't want to wait every time you make a small change. Part of making sort of forward progress as a developer in an efficient way is actually being able to iterate quickly. So if you have to wait five minutes every time you run the test suites, you're never going to get anywhere. Um, Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. These down here are unit tests, right? Um, I'm gonna pick one of them. So let's pick the comparator method and let's just zoom in on that and try to get that to work. Here's another trick. You can run one test at a time. See this thing over here? If I click on it and hit run, it'll just run that one test. And now you'll watch, see how fast that is? That finished almost immediately, right? You know? Um, and it failed almost immediately. And it's also telling me why it failed. So let's see why it failed. So essentially, um, what's the problem here? Well, uh, we've created a list of courses here. And what we're doing in the test suite is we're comparing them to make sure that uh, your comparison function works properly. Um, and one of the courses is uh, Badminton 100. Uh, that's Introduction to Badminton. Uh, we also have Badminton 200, which is Intermediate Badminton. Um, and then we have some other courses in the CS department. And we, we create these uh, summaries by hand, and then we check different combinations to make sure your comparator works properly. Um, so in general, when we compare something to itself, we expect the result to be zero. And so right now, our comparator that does nothing other than return zero works fine. And so it actually doesn't fail until we get down to line 89, at which point something goes wrong. Um, and so let's go over here um, and go into our comparator method. And this follows the you know, principle of the, the comparable interface, which is that we're supposed to compare course model one and course model two based on some attribute and then use that to, uh, to decide uh, what to do. Um, so, and if you look through, and if you actually go through the test suites here, what you're gonna find is that the comparisons, we actually have some courses in here that we don't even, um, we don't even uh, ask you to, from semesters that we don't actually even ask you to do. Most of these are from the fall, but we have one from the spring, right? Um, and so some of these aren't even courses that you're going to be working with uh, in the future. Um, and so the idea is that we want to make sure that these, uh, and if you look, sometimes you can actually learn a lot about what we expect from actually reading the test suites, right? Um, and so, for example, um, you know, you can see that when we compare CS125 fall and CS125 spring, we expect that to be equal to zero. And so that might give you a hint that we're actually not expecting you to use the semester and the year when you compare things. Okay, so what should we compare on? Um, let's try, well, let's just, just try, for now, let's just try comparing on the title, right? So let's say instead of just zero, we're gonna do course model one dot title um, dot, uh, let's see, it's gonna be get title, right? dot compare to uh, course model two dot, and we can actually use just title here because this is code that's defined on the class. All right, so let's just try using the title uh, and see if that works. Um, now, what I just did is I just ran control R to rerun the test. So that's gonna build, now it's gonna run the test again. Um, and so now uh, it's complaining and, and now it's failing. Okay, um, and now it's complaining about um, let's see, CS225 and CS125, and the problem is that, uh, oh, sorry, what I wanted to do is just try the numbers. Let's just use the number, uh, right? 
Because that seems reasonable. It seems like a reasonable way to compare the two courses is to just compare based on their course number, right? Like 125 comes before 225, et cetera, right? Um, okay, so this doesn't work, and it tells me the exact line where things are broken. And here's the problem, which is that it's expecting that badminton, two, badminton 200, sorry, badminton 200 should come before CS 125. So we're actually also using the department as well as the course number, right? Um, so let's try uh, combining the two, right? Uh, so why don't we do this? We'll say, um, uh, we're, we're gonna call this, uh, uh, let's see, first compare is equal to course model one dot uh, department plus, plus course model one dot um, number. And then we'll do the same thing for uh, second compare, the course model two dot department plus. And so this is a way that allows us to incorporate both pieces of information. And then, oh, that needs to be a string, that's not a string. String first compare uh, compare to second compare. Let's try that. So now I'm essentially creating a string that has both the department and the, the title. Uh, okay, so now I still have a problem here on line 98. Um, oh, okay, and, and now I have this other problem, right? So if I look at these two courses, I've got 498 and 498, oh, oh no. So, so now I have two courses that actually have the same department and title. Um, but you can see, I'm doing pretty good. Like I made it all, let's see, I made it all the way down to 98. So I only have a couple left that I actually need to, to incorporate. And so we're on the right track here. So I'm gonna leave you here. We're not done, um, but you're quite close and you can probably take you know, what we've done together and use that to get across the finish line. Now, let me point out something. This, the real goal here is to give you a couple of really important hints. So first of all, use the test suites. Um, second of all, write small pieces of code and run the test suite frequently. Third, start with the unit tests. The integration tests are never going to work until the unit tests work. So you start with the unit tests. As soon as those work, you can start running the slower tests. Fourth big thing, don't run the whole test suite every time because the whole test suite runs a bunch of integration tests and until you get the unit test to work, those are going to fail and they are slow. So you know, use these features of Android Studio to zero in on the tests you want to run, run one at a time, make small changes until it works, and then move on. If you approach software development using this approach um, throughout the rest of your career, whether it's in this course, 128, 225, any course that you take in the future, building your own projects, working in a software development company, starting a startup, whatever, it always works. It's something that I still do today and it's the primary way that I work. When I work on a project, I write a test. If something is broken, I write a test to make sure that I understand what's broken and then I change the code until that test passes. And then I run the whole test suite to make sure I didn't break anything else and then I'm done and I have my cup of coffee. So this is a tried, proven approach to software development that will always work. Um, and it's something that we want you to get in the habit of starting uh, right now in CS125.